let's have an undamped single degree of freedom system with mass M and spring with stiffness constant K and the displacement of the mass is X. And now the system is excited by an external force F. The equation of motion of the system is given by mx double dot plus kx equals to f. Now the force here is not a static force, but a dynamic force exciting the system with frequency. So in this case, we assume a simple harmonic motion where f can be defined as f sine omega t, where f capital is the peak amplitude of the force. Because the force is harmonic, the solutions for the response will also be harmonic. And so the amplitude x will also be x sine omega t, with x capital is the peak vibration amplitude. Then we can substitute ft and xt to the equation of motions. Remember that x double dot is the second derivative of x. And so we will have minus omega square m x sine omega t plus kx sine omega t equals to f sine omega t. We can cancel out sine omega t. And we want x over f, so we have 1 over k minus omega square m. So we've got x over f, which tells us the vibration amplitude of the system over a unit force. But we can write down this expression in terms of the natural frequency of the system. Remember that the natural frequency is omega n equals to square root of k over m. We can divide the numerator and the numerator by k. So we have 1 over k over k over k minus omega square m over k where this term m over k is actually 1 over omega square n so we will then have 1 over k over 1 minus omega square over omega n square again dealing with vibrations we are not interested whether it is a positive or negative value but only its magnitude of vibration. Okay, let's move on on the other screen. And what we want to do with these expressions is that we want to know how the magnitude of XF behaves as we change the frequency. Okay, so this is the most important concept you have to put in your mind, that omega is the frequency of the external force that drives the system. We call it excitation frequency. Meanwhile, omega n is the property of the vibrating system, which is basically the ratio between the stiffness and the mass. What we want to emphasize is that it is possible that the driving frequency can be the same as the natural frequency. All right, so let's plot the magnitude of xf as the functions of the excitation frequency omega. Where we want to see how the system behaves when we excite it from low frequency to high frequency. Let's say the excitation frequency will have the same value with the natural frequency somewhere over here. And for ease of analysis, we divide the frequency into three regions with omega n as the reference. The first one is when the excitation frequency is much lower than omega n. The second one is when the frequency is very close or equals to omega n. And the third one is when the frequency is much higher than omega n. Okay, let's start with the first region when omega is much smaller than omega n. So this term here will be much less than 1 or approaching 0. Let's say omega is 1 and omega n is 1 million. So we have 1 over 1 million, which is 0, 0.000 something. 
so x over f is 1 over k. So the way we present this in the graph is that at this region, the level of x over f is almost constant at 1 over k. All right, now for the second region where omega is almost equals to omega n, this term omega over omega n will be equals to 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So 1 over k over 0 will give the magnitude x over f to infinity. So what does it mean? It means the magnitude of vibrations at omega n will be sufficiently large that the system will vibrate excessively. Therefore, we have the graph going up rapidly to infinity. This phenomenon, when the excitation frequency matches the natural frequency, we call it a resonance. For the third region, when omega is much larger than omega n, this term here will be much, much larger than 1. Let's say omega is 1 million and omega n is 1. So we have 1 minus 1 million. So we can ignore 1 and thus we we end up with omega square over omega n square only because we take the absolute value. So x over f is 1 over k over omega square over omega n square. Because omega n square is k over m, we have 1 over k over omega square m over k. We can cancel out k and we finally get 1 over omega square m. This expression indicates that as the frequency getting larger, the magnitude x over f getting smaller. So the graph will be a curve that rapidly decay away towards the frequency. Okay guys, so in summary, we have seen the response of a single degree of freedom system towards an external dynamic force. The main takeaway here is that it shows what happens when the excitation frequency matches the natural frequency of the system, which results in a very large value of vibration amplitude, and we call this resonance. This is the thing that must be avoided in engineering because the effect can be so fatal and dangerous to any system or any structure. Okay, in the next video, we will discuss the similar derivations of x over f, but for a single degree of freedom system, with damping element and we will see how to reduce the x over f magnitude by controlling the mass the stiffness and the damping of the system okay so that's it for now bye bye